And it's still sort of rather negative news, particularly if you're a pensioner, because it seems like there's blow upon blow, doesn't it, at the moment? And this is a further blow to pensioners because Labour is reportedly planning to axe the 25% discount on council tax for single people. Um, and it's become known as the widow's tax, if yeah. you like. Well, that's after news that millions of pensioners will miss out on their winter fuel payments, as the Chancellor, of course, looks to plug her £22 billion black hole in public spending. Well, uh, as we <laughs> introduced a minute ago, political commentator <laughs> Andy Williams is with us. I mean, I don't know what's going on here, but it does seem as though like, this new government doesn't like pensioners. Well, I think over the last 15 or so years, working people, parents, students have all had to cough up, have had to pay more tax, have had to contribute to uh, and, and, you know, respond to straightened times. And pensioners have been quite well protected. Let's be honest, they have. If you look at the triple lock, I mean, that guarantees that the state pension will rise quite significantly every year. And, and I'm afraid, and I don't want to sound callous about it, but if you look at it, even the poorest pensioners will get a pay rise next year of... £160, even after the wind fuel allowance is taken away, because the state pension is going up by £460 a year. So I don't buy this line that there's an attack on pensioners. Actually, I think Labour's looking at, we have, you know, we have difficult choices to make about public finances, and pensioners are going to have to stand some of that cost. But it seems as though they are willing to put pensioners' health at risk with this as well. I mean, Labour's own analysis in 2017 mm. said that they, they predicted cutting winter fuel payments could kill 4,000 people. People can't believe this is now coming from a Labour government. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not a great place to be, and I don't think Labour would like to do this in an ideal world, but it is going to be means-tested. I mean, if you look at AGK, who are running a big campaign against cuts to the winter fuel payment, they say that 2 million people will be adversely affected. That means that 8 million people are getting winter fuel payments every year and don't need it. So I think that's a good use of... A, a, it's a good policy in terms of taking that money away from people who are getting that money and don't need it. You've got two million people who do need to be protected. So means testing, I think, is the right way to go. It means testing is always expensive, though, in itself. Yeah, it is. It requires... Uh, apparently, the form that you've got to fill in, uh, this is why it's on the age you... 200 website. questions or it's, so. It's a, it's a big deal form for some people, um, and it's, it's a heck of a thing to have to go through. You mm. need somebody to help you, almost. Yeah. Um, and and it, uh, a means testing is expensive because it's another layer of bureaucracy it and is. everything. And you wonder whether it really would be worth it. Of course, there are well-off pensioners who don't need it. Um, I think we'll be hearing a bit later on in the programme from somebody who said they see it as a, as a nice little giveaway. Um, that's, and they're not moaning that it's going to be taken away from them. But surely that's the min minority of people. Well, no, I think, I think the analysis suggests that 80% of people who get the winter fuel payment don't, literally don't need it. And therefore, that is a waste of money. That yes, is a waste is. of money. Yes. And actually, the triple lock is giving pensioners a, a far above infl inflation pay rise because inflation's at 2.2%, it's going up by 4.6%. So next year, the state pension will go up by £460 a year. We're talking about, for the poorest and oldest pensioners, a maximum of £300 being taken away. So from April, and I accept we have to get through the winter first, but from April, every pensioner will be much better off. So I, I don't quite understand where you don't see this outrage with working people's taxes going up. You don't see this outrage with parents having to pay more, with students having to pay more. And actually, pensioners have been, apart from motorists, and that's a whole other conversation, pensioners have been the most protected demographic in society for decades and decades. But let's face it, pensioners are older people. Yes. And they're more vulnerable in lots of different mm -hmm. ways. It's, so it's not And that's why the poorest people need to be protected. Mm -hmm. But there are other pensioners who are not all right, what about the way. council tax then? Well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not in favour of that. I'm massively in favour of reforming council tax. I think it's a really antiquated way of doing things. So the way that we pay council tax was decided in April 1991. Mm. That's four months before I was born, just ageing myself there. And, you know, the, the, it, it's completely outdated. It needs to be looked at and reformed. Well, Margaret Thatcher but tried not... to reform it. We're calling it the poll Well, tax. she sort of brought it in and then, yeah. it, was, yeah, and then it was changed, exactly. But... We, we can't have a situation where Buckingham Palace pays less council tax than a three-bed semi in Blackpool, which is absolutely true. However, um, I'm not in favour of taking it away from or changing the rules for single people because, firstly, by definition, if you're a single person in the house, 
you don't use the same no. level of services no, as four mm. people in a in a in, in a home. So I'm not in favour of that. Mm -hmm. um, can we talk about uh, Sir Keir Starmer breaching mm. parliamentary rules by failing to declare these fancy clothes that Lord Ali had given his wife, Victoria? Um, I mean, it's awkward for Sir Keir Starmer, isn't it? This is a man who is very vocal about Boris Johnson and his reliance on donors yeah. and also <laughs> has vowed to clear up politics and root out cronyism. Yeah, I don't think we'll ever see a prime minister who uh, debased the office as much as Boris Johnson. I think Boris Johnson was a complete disgrace in almost every single respect. However, um, it's frustrating as somebody who is a, a Labour member, a Labour supporter, to see Starmer making some of these, frankly, rookie errors. Um, you know, being in hock to donors is not a good look. Um, I don't know the specifics of this uh, case, mm. but it's there have been a few sort of rumblings now about things that Starm has done in relation to donors, and I think they just need to clamp down on it. Yeah, the Financial Times reports this morning that between 2019, the general election, and July the 1st of this year, mm -hmm. Sir Keir Starmer declared £76,000 worth of clothes and entertainment from donors. That's more than almost any other... It's MP. an awful lot of clothes. It's an awful lot of clothes. It is, and he does wear some nice suits, but... Oh. No, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, it's, it's, it's not great, and if you're going to talk about cleaning up politics, you have to just say, mm. no... You know, there necessarily has to be money in politics, there have to be donations, that's just the way the world works. But you have to separate yourself from anything that looks like you're mm. taking money and gifts in exchange for influence. I think that's really and, and a really this, important This principle. is Lord Ally again, or yeah. Ali. Ali yeah. um, and um, it, it would appear, I mean, he had a, um, a pass into Downing Street, didn't he, which was Temporarily, yes. Yes, I know yeah. he doesn't have it anymore, but, um, you know, you wonder what else, what, what other sort of mm. um, exchanges were made. Yeah. And, um, uh, uh, and it's a terrible lot of clothes. That's I just can't quite get my head around. Yes. It's How a lot of money. money. Yeah. And it is, it is that question of influence, isn't it? Because some yeah. reports in the papers say that Lord Ali has more sway, has more influence over Sir Keir Starmer than some ministers. I, I would. I don't think that's the case. But again, it's about. It's more about the symbolism and the appearances. Mm -hmm. And I think a much smarter thing to do would be to just completely distance yourself from that sort of mm -hmm. thing. And then no. I, I actually don't think Lord Ali has a great deal of influence. Is my understanding. But I understand that it doesn't look great. And I think you just have to distance yourself. Mm. I can understand that Lord Ali being generous and saying you're going to be publicly seen all over the world now. You're on the world stage. Um, you need a decent wardrobe and here's what... Some you know. nice glasses. Uh, and all yeah, of those. absolutely, yeah. all of that. And, and, and your wife as well. But it's not as if uh, Keir Starmer and his wife aren't very well off already. I mean, they're very comfortably off. They are. They're they millionaires, afford, aren't they? They can the afford their own clothes, mm. can't they? I think, I think they're pretty well off, mm. yeah. I think mm. that's true. It's just, as you say, rookie era. Why, you, you'd think entering number 10, you'd better, you'd think, better make sure I'm whiter than white here. Yeah. Yeah, and... and yeah, as I say, it's it's not it a great look, but, them, I but I don't I don't think it's I don't think in the scheme of things I don't think it's that important. I think if you look at some previous prime ministers and the way they behaved, I mean, I just don't think it's remotely comparable. Mm. If you look at the way if you look at the way Boris Johnson behaved with wallpaper and having you know taking loans, brokering deals with the chair of the BBC, I mean, I, I actually I think we should be. And that happened during maybe the not all your views will it agree this. Happened during Tony Blair's government as well. Well, it did, it did, it did, and he was on Rupert Murdoch's yacht and all of those yeah. sorts of things. But I think we should be grateful that in general we now have a prime minister who I think is principled, is a decent person, and I do think in the in the long term we'll see a you know a better and more principled politics. Okay, well let us know what you think about that. You will certainly have a view. GBnews.com/slash. You may not say. Agree. Andy, thank you very much. Good to see you. <laughs> you may not agree. Yeah, that was quite a brave thing to say, I think. A lot of our viewers are not going to agree with you on that. No, no. Mm. And they feel sort of very let down. New government, you would expect a clean sweep, a bit of breath of fresh air, and it's almost as though we're not getting that. It's doom and gloom, isn't it? Mm. At least it feels brave. that way. Yeah.